All right, so we're going to go ahead and record our next set of notes here. Um, I've never done it with my little video in the corner there, so this is kind of interesting. Um, but I figured, especially as I start teaching the actual content of the lessons, this might be um, a little bit easier for you guys to see in case I do, you know, intense hand motions or anything like that. So um, this is going to be notes number uh, one. Let's double check. Yes, notes number one. So changing shadows. All right. So most important thing to understand is what is a shadow, okay? Um, most everything in the universe is either, is one of two things, is either matter or energy. Um, matter being something that has an, a definite mass or definite volume, something you can touch or you can um, smell, you can feel. Um, a common mistake that people make is that matter has to have a certain size or a certain mass, or not mass, but a certain, uh, like a shape. For example, okay. Um, so, for example, air. Air is matter, right? There's there's a certain amount of matter or air in this room, okay. Um, let's see what else could we think of. Um, grass outside that has a certain mass, except a certain amount of space. Um, a book obviously would be mass or matter. <laughs> it has mass, therefore it is matter, okay. So most of the things that you think of that you interact with on an everyday basis are usually matter. Um, the other thing that you interact with mostly is energy. Okay, this is going to be light. This is going to be mechanical energy, so the energy of movement or motion. Um, this is going to be electrical energy. A lot of us use a ton of electrical energy in our houses most of the time. Um, so most everything that we interact with is either going to be matter or energy. A shadow is one of the only things that is actually neither matter nor energy. It is actually just darkness. Okay, so it is the absence of light. Um, a shadow is a thing, but it is created by taking away something else. It is the absence of light. So um, we're going to go ahead and give shadow a technical definition. This is what we're going to use um, for the test as well as for the quiz. But a shadow is the dark area cast by an object. So uh, what kinds of objects create shadows? Shadows are cast by what we call opaque objects. Um, normally, this is where I would pause and say, who knows what opaque means? <laughs> but typically, um, you've already experienced, uh, you're already um, familiar with the terms opaque, translucent, and transparent. We're going to go over those real quick here. Um, so shadows are cast by opaque objects, which means that these are objects that do not allow any light to pass through them, right? So for example, if I were to uh, turn off the lights in my room right now and hold my hand up, right? Uh, in front of the window, on the opposite wall, there would be a shadow cast, right? And I could change my fingers and change the size and shape of the shadow, etc. cetera. I could make a little butterfly if I wanted, okay? Um, all of those things would be shadows because my hand is then blocking the light, creating an absence of light on the other side, okay? That would be an opaque object. Opaque objects do not allow light to pass through them. Now, translucent is kind of the middle ground. It allows some light to pass through. It's not completely transparent, which is what that the, our last um, descriptor there is. Transparent allows all light to pass through, okay? Opaque allows no light whatever, whatsoever to pass through. Transparent allows some light to pass, or allows all light to pass through while translucent allows only some light to pass through. So in the picture here, I have three examples. In the picture of the giraffe, um, I like that because it gives you kind of a good, um, almost like stepping stone. It shows all three of them side by side. So the opaque uh, panel, if you will, um, you can't see any part of the giraffe, right? That window is blocking all light. You cannot see anything behind it. Um, there is no light passing through. The translucent panel, the one there in the middle, um, you can see somewhat of the image in the background, what's behind it, but it's not extremely clear. So that is allowing some light to pass through, but not all. Transparent is the far right panel. Um, that is the one where it allows all light to pass through, okay? It is um, almost like, a, well, it, it is literally a window, okay, as if nothing were there at all. Now, a truly transparent object will not create any shadow whatsoever. Okay, um, that's if it is truly transparent. 
it's pretty difficult to find something that is 100% truly transparent. Um, but a good example would be these cups over here on the right. So the opaque object would be the blue cup, right? If I had um, a flashlight and I were to place that cup in front of the flashlight, it would create a pretty dark shadow on the wall behind it, okay? Because it is blocking all of the light, not allowing any to pass through. The green cup would be my example for translucent. It would allow some light to pass through, but not all, okay? And then the clear cup is my example of a transparent object. Now, in this example, if I were to, if I had a clear cup here in my hand, which I don't, but if I did, and I were to put it in front of a, a flashlight to try and create a shadow, it would create somewhat of a shadow, okay? This is not a 100% transparent object, but, um, it does allow all of the light to pass through, <laughs> we'll say maybe 99% of the light. You would still see um, a faint outline of the clear cup, but um, in comparison to the others, it is more transparent than the others. So uh, shadows are cast by opaque objects, sometimes translucent objects, but not usually transparent. All right, so... The sun and shadows, okay? The reason why we talk about shadows in our Earth and Space unit is because it, it by figuring out and studying shadows and the patterns of shadows um, on Earth, it helps us understand how the Earth and the sun are related to each other, okay? So talking about the sun and its patterns, the sun rises in the east, creating shadows that extend or go out towards the west, okay? So for example... Um, I should have been a little better prepared with my objects here, but here's my sanitizer, right? Got to say sanitized. Um, let's pretend the flash, the, the pencil is the flashlight, right? So this is the flashlight and I'm shining light onto this object right here. Then that will create a shadow that will extend this way, right? Okay. So if the sun rises in the east, which it does, it will create shadows on the earth that extend towards the west, right? Here's the light source, or I guess if I'm following the picture here, here's the light source in the east, okay, at sunrise. When it shines onto the object, the shadow extends west, okay? So if you were to stand outside and not know what time it was, but you noticed, hey, my shadow, the shadow of my body is extending west, well, that has to mean that the light source is on the opposite side, is in the east. And if the sun is in the east, that means it must be morning time, okay? Um, a good way to remember the, the order of where the sun rises and sets, it rises in the east and sets in the west, which is alphabetical order, right? E comes before W, so you can uh, easily remember that the sun starts in the east and then uh, sets in the west, Okay, so as the sun travels across the sky during the day, the direction of the shadow cast by an object changes based on where the light source is shining from. At sunset, the shadow will extend towards the east. Okay, you can see in this picture here, um, because the sun is kind of like lower in the sky and in front of the people on the hill, the shadow is extending behind them, right? If the light source is coming this, wow, my hand looks so big right there. If the light source is coming this way, then when it hits the object, it will create the longer shadows that extend behind it, okay? Um, so for example, let me go back to my um, sanitizer shadow picture. That doesn't work very well because you can't really see it because it's clear. Um, we'll use my cup, I guess. Okay, so this is my cup, right? If my light source is coming this direction, right? The shadow is going this way. Well, as the sun gets higher and higher in the sky, what happens to my shadow over here? Okay. Well, it goes from being long, long, long to getting a little bit shorter. And then eventually when the sun is directly overhead of the object, the shadow will be right underneath it. Correct? Right? The light's coming down this way, therefore blocking the light and creating a shadow right below it. Okay. Then as the sun begins to drop into the sky a little more and the light shines on the object in this direction, now the shadow will have moved to the other side completely. Okay. Uh, let me show you this YouTube video. I've never done this while also trying to record. So let's see if this works. Oh, it doesn't work because I did it with the little tab instead. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't know if you guys can hear that, but I can't get it to stop. <laughs> it 
Okay. All right. Well, I'll include the video in the pod then because it's not going to work right here. But it's just a, it's a time lapse. It shows the progression of shadows as it goes from long to a little bit shorter to a little bit longer on the other side. But I'll include that in the pod later. Okay. So shadows that point to the west are very long in the morning, right? Let me go back to my example here. If I have my cup and I have my uh, light source shining here, the further down on the cup my uh, light source is, the longer the shadow will be on this side, right? It's not going to be super duper short. If that were the case, it would have to come up a little bit higher, right? But as the sun, if the sun is just beginning to rise over the horizon and it's shining onto the cup, or onto the object, it will create a pretty long shadow this way, okay? Um, you can easily duplicate this on your own if you have a flashlight at home. Um, set up like a glue stick or even a cup like I'm using and use your flashlight, hold it directly to the side, and then as you begin to carry it up and over, you'll see how the shadow changes. We'll also do this in our lab on Monday, um, which you'll see there. So the shadow is then shorter and points a little bit north um, if it's not directly underneath the object, like right below it, um, usually the sun doesn't go like absolutely 90 degrees directly overhead. It comes a little bit lower in the sky. I don't know if you guys can see that. So, for example, the sun is not normally directly overhead of us. It's usually a little bit uh, off to the side, okay? Uh, up here in the summer and then actually in the spring and fall, it's about middle. And then in the winter, it's a little bit lower. Um, not really enough for us to notice, but... The point is, if the sun is directly overhead, the shadow's very likely going to point just a little bit to the north, okay? Uh, when the sun reaches its zenith, which is its highest point in the sky, so that's going to be right up here, right? Directly overhead, not to the side. It's going to be up here directly overhead. Then the shadows get longer and point east in the evening because the light source, the sun, would be in the west, Okay. Um, I'll also include that video in the pod after this as well. So it says fill in the position of the sun and the position of the shadow for each time of day. I went ahead and included the uh, compass rose up here in the top right corner, just in case you need to remember your directions. Um, but east is going to be on this side. It's really hard to write with a mouse like this. Okay, and then west will be on this side. So at 7.30 in the morning, 7.30 a.m., right, um, where is the sun going to be? Well, that's just after sunrise, so my sun should be about right here, okay? This is going to take me a while to draw a little rays, so I'm just going to draw a few. All right, so the sun's over here in the east. That means that the sun, that the, the light, if I can change it to yellow here, the light is shining onto the tree from this angle, okay? Therefore, what would the shadow look like, all right? Well, if um, the sun is obviously on the eastern side, then the shadows will point to the west, okay? So we're going to have our shadow this way, okay? But because it's so low in the sky, it's going to be a longer shadow. So yes, it will point to the east, and it will be pretty long. Okay, then at 12 o'clock p.m., which is noon, okay, the sun's going to be pretty much directly overhead, okay, which would then cause the shadow to be maybe a little bit north, but pretty much directly underneath the tree. Ooh, I'm trying to color that in, but it is not working very well. All right. Then at 7.30 p.m., which is just before sunset, okay, the sun's going to be right over here on, in the west. Oops, I'm supposed to do it in red. That's okay. Sun would be over there in the west, which would create shadows that extend towards the east, and then they're also going to be very long, okay? Shadows are longest at sunrise and sunsets, uh, right after, right before and after the sun disappears over the horizon. Okay. This is a lot harder than it looks with a mouse. Okay. So that's how you would fill uh, this section in. Uh, I do want you to make sure you understand this because you will have a section like this on the quiz that will 
I'll give you plenty of time for when that will be, but uh, just so you know, you will be um, assessed or quizzed on this. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Okay, clear the screen and move forward. Okay, whoa, look at that little focus thing. Okay, so shadows change size and length when the sun's position in the sky changes. I thought we just talked about, right? When it's lower, the shadows are longer. When it's a little more directly overhead, then they get shorter and right underneath. A shadow's orientation is the direction it points. So if I say, okay, what is this shadow's orientation? You would say, well, it's to the east or to the west or it's to the north, etc. Just a couple more terms for us to understand. What? I don't know what that means. I don't understand why it's doing that, but whatever. Okay. Last thing to note is the sun and the seasons. So yes, the shadows change um, every day from morning to night, but they also change from season to season, okay? Uh, this graph, graph, this picture does a great job showing you the difference. In the, whoa, in the summer, okay, the sun is extremely high in the sky, all right? It comes pretty much straight overhead. It's part of the reason why it's so hot. All right, so if I turn to the side here and I have my cup example again, if I'm going to trace the sun's movement, right, it's going to start on, in the back side, it comes directly overhead of the object. Pretty much right. It, yeah, it might be a little bit this way, but it's going to be almost directly overhead, okay? And then it would finish, obviously, at night over here. In the autumn and spring, okay, in the um, milder seasons, the sun still goes from east to west, but instead... But instead of being right overhead like this, okay, it's actually going to come up a little bit shorter, all right? Still coming east to west, still coming across the whole dome of the sky, but instead of being directly overhead, it's now a little bit lower. And then in the winter, it's going to be lowest. It's not going to be like down here. That's a little dramatic. But in the winter, it will still go east to west, but it will be even lower in the sky, okay? So if we looked at midday or noontime, in the summer, the sun's directly overhead, in the fall and spring, and then in the winter. But remember, it's still tracing that full uh, east to west. It's just going to be winter, fall, summer, or, you know, in spring. Okay. Um, I will check these and maybe include them. We'll see. Okay, so last thing uh, we're going to go over is a couple uh, important dates for the seasons. On June 21st, the, the first day of summer, the sun is extremely high in the sky. It's actually the highest that it will be. It's also the, the longest day of the year. This is called the summer solstice, okay? Um, it has the most sunlight um, because the sun is going from, it's, it's taking its furthest trip across the sky, basically, from very, very far east to very, very far west directly over overhead three months later on september 21st which is the first day of the fall season the sun's a little bit lower in the sky like i was just explaining to you right okay so this is summer solstice this is going to be a uh, fall and or fall solstice this is called the autumnal equinox uh best way to remember that is the word autumn which is another word for fall is literally in the word i've highlighted it in red there that's the autumnal equinox then on the first day of winter, three months later, on December 21st, the sun is at the lowest noon position. So it's still going to go across the sky, right? Um, this would be the summer solstice, autumnal equinox, and then the winter solstice. I'm trying to get my arm out of the way. Winter solstice, okay? Um, that's going to be on December 21st. It's still going to go across the sky, like I said, but it will be a little bit lower. And then three months later on March 21st, it's come back to that middle position. It's kind of climbed back up to the middle. That's going to be the vernal equinox. Um, it's not called the spring equinox um, because the word vernal actually means appropriate to spring, as you can see here. All right, so it says uh, to write a three to five sentence summary based on these notes. All I'm going to ask you to do um, at the, actually at the end of this pod, so before you turn it in, I want you to give me one sentence summarizing the point of what we talked about, right? So we've, we've gone over um, how shadows change. We've gone over 
how they change from morning to evening and how they change from season to season, okay? So what is the point of that? At the very beginning of this, remember I said that there was a reason why we're studying the patterns of shadows. So um, try to go back and remember that. If you need to go back and watch it again, you can, um, but give me one sentence, like a good summary. I would say at least eight to 10 words in your sentence. Do not say shadows are cool, okay? That's not okay. Give me a good sentence describing what was the point of this lesson. Why did we just spend all this time talking about shadows and their patterns? Okay, so I'll include the, the YouTube videos um, later in this pod, but then the last part of your assignment today will be to give me that one sentence summary. Other than that, I'll see you Monday.